RuPaul Charles told Us Weekly in 2012 that it only took him one pitch meeting to sell the show to its first network, Logo. Apparently, some members of the crew took the show's name a little too literally at first. We did have quite a few crew members who found things surprising, lighting director Jenny Bloom told Billboard in 2018. They would come in and wonder where the quarter mile of the drag race was. Or at one point, I had a crew member come up to me on their first episode, with all the queens lined up on stage, and he whispered in my ear, so they're all dudes? I was like, yeah, that's kind of the concept of the show. While Drag Race is being filmed in Los Angeles, the contestants are secluded, queens in season 2 of All Stars revealed in 2016. They aren't allowed to have phones, they're kept in separate hotel rooms, and sometimes production will even put tape on their doors to know if the queen has left her room. In fact, one former queen, Willem, was apparently disqualified in 2012 after her husband visited her hotel room. She later insinuated that this wasn't the exact reason for her departure. It takes a bit of preparation for each week's challenge, so at the beginning of the season, the contestants are given a packet of the songs, Season 7's Jade and Your Fear said in 2015. However, they only know a couple of days before the performance which exact song will be picked. The show makes it look like the queens only get one chance to sissy that walk, but they actually get two. At a Q&A in 2013, Shangela said the contestants walk once with music and once without so that the judges can voice their quippy commentary the second time around. RuPaul makes being a drag queen look effortless, but in reality, a lot of time is spent transforming. The TV star told Hollywood Today Live host Ross Matthews that it took him and his former makeup artist, Matthew Anderson, a whopping six hours to get him ready for filming. Matthew and I, we get back there, we start at six in the morning, we have tea, we eat, we dance, we look at the outfits, we just get into it, RuPaul said in 2016. It's widely discussed that RuPaul often wears sweatbands while sitting behind the judges' table. Bob the Drag Queen all but confirmed that fact in an interview with Entertainment Weekly in 2020. It is a known fact that RuPaul's dresses are in two chunks, Bob the Drag Queen said. Sometimes she'll work the runway and take off all of her padding and put on some sweatbands and Ugg slippers and walk around the studio. Everyone knows this. RuPaul gets out of drag from the waist down to sit behind the table, which I would, too. Paris is Burning was released in 1990 and followed the ballroom scene of Harlem in New York City. In the documentary, drag queens introduce the idea of reading, or playfully making fun of somebody. RuPaul introduced this art form into almost every season of Drag Race, saying, reading is fundamental. The competition is serious business, but that doesn't mean that the host doesn't have a little fun. Lighting director Jenny Bloom told Billboard in 2018 RuPaul used to roller skate around the set in the show's early seasons and make the crew laugh. There's so many things that made it on camera to be proud of, but a lot of my favorite moments are things that never make it on air, Bloom said in the interview. Back in season 2 and 3, Ru used to roller skate around the set when there weren't any sets being built. And you can never forget the best sound in the whole world is hearing RuPaul laugh from somewhere off in the distance. His famous line if you can't love yourself, how in the hell are you going to love somebody else? was inspired by his mother. From behind the judges panel, RuPaul says the same line at the end of every episode of Drag Race. It's a mantra, he told NPR in 2020. You need touchstones and totems. And, actually, it's a tradition my mother passed on to me, which is having sayings that can help realign you in this life, but it plays on the insecurities that every human has which is, are they going to like me? Do I smell? Do they not like me because I smell? So these mantras are set to align you with the truth of who you are, which is, you are love, and you cannot give something that you do not have. When Lady Gaga appeared on the show, she gave the Queen so much constructive feedback that the producers apparently wanted her to wrap it up. Drag Race has had some amazing celebrity guest judges in the past, including Lady Gaga. Christina Aguilera, and Ariana Grande. When Lady Gaga appeared on the show in 2017, 
she gave the queens extra feedback on their performances when the cameras stopped rolling. When she came back into the work room, she really came back with some constructive feedback and criticism, but that was preceded by a nice, pretty good conversation, one of the queens, Peppermint, said on Entertainment Weekly Spinch podcast in 2020. Sasha Velour added that Gaga was giving them so much feedback, there was even a moment when the producers were kind of like, trying to get her to wrap it up, because she had handwritten notes about each and every one of us, and she went through, took her time, and gave individual feedback to each of us sitting right there. They were like, okay, we've got to get back to filming. And she was like, no, I'm going to finish this. After appearing on the show, many of the A-list guests also appear on RuPaul and Michelle Visage's podcast What's the Tea? Fifi O'Hara, who first appeared on Season 4 of Drag Race, made her come back on Season 2 of All Stars, but it turns out she was actually supposed to be on Season 1. In an interview with Vulture in 2016, the Queen revealed she couldn't compete because she got arrested. I got arrested for some stuff that was on my background, stuff that I didn't take care of, so that was the reason I couldn't do the first season, because my background check came up dirty, she said. Although it may seem like the winner is being crowned in the final episode, the show's producers film multiple endings with the final two or three queens, having them act out a winning moment. This is so that no spoilers are leaked between the taping and the air date. This means the final queens get to watch the finale live to see who RuPaul chose to wear the crown.